Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. She tried to ruin my wedding with a dangerous cake. Now, she's the one who's out of my life. When I was 13, my mom and dad got a divorce. I could tell it was coming because I had friends whose parents had divorced too. They told me what was happening in their homes, and I saw that it was the same with my family. At the time, I was scared and sad that the same thing would happen to my mom and dad. I didn't want to be without either of my parents. But as I grew older, I realized that it was the best thing for us. My dad was toxic and wasn't an ideal example of a father. He would manipulate my mom into giving him her salary and even bonuses. He wouldn't return home for weeks, and whenever he did, there was no peace. At some point, I began to prefer it when he wasn't home because I had become afraid of him. This went on for years until my mom explained that she and daddy needed a break so we would leave our home. I knew exactly what that meant and it took everything in my mom to take that step. She had lived in misery with my dad for years and many times I overheard her crying and speaking to her best friend over the phone. Listening to her responses, I knew her friend was asking her to leave my dad, but she always said she still loved him and worried about me. Luckily for us, my mom had a house that she inherited from her dad, so we moved there. That house was one of the reasons my mom and dad always fought. He wanted her to sell it, but she refused, most likely because she knew that was her escape. And if she sold it, he would take the money away. The house was in her name, so he couldn't do anything about it. My mom and I had planned to move out during the times when my dad would leave and not return for weeks. My mom knew his patterns so she could tell when he wouldn't be back for a while, usually when he had collected her money. My mom's best friend came to help us move out of our home. It was sad, but I knew it was needed. I knew my dad wasn't kind and mistreated my mom, so if leaving him meant the only person who showed that they cared for me was safe, I was okay with it. Over the next few months, after we left our former house, my mom filed for divorce and also got full custody of me. My dad was mandated to pay child support. It was a relief because he could no longer take my mom's money. Instead, he had to pay her. Slowly, my mom started to be herself again. She was smiling more and was present for most of my school activities. My mom met my stepdad at a gym, and he was a lovely person. Even before they married, he treated my mom like a queen, which I loved. He would call me his princess. He was more than my dad ever was to me. The only issue was that he had a daughter and we didn't get along. She was older than me and thought I was stealing her father from her. Surprisingly, she was nice to my mom, but not to me. My mom explained that Lisa, my stepsister, and I went through something similar, except it was her mom. That made me understand why she would accept my mom but think I was taking her father away. I decided that I would love her until she could love me back. It's been many years now, and that still hasn't happened, so I've come to terms with it. I dated very intentionally because I wanted to marry a man like my stepdad, not my biological father. As I dated different men, I figured out how to catch those red flags before we got in too deep. I didn't want to make a mistake in my marriage and spend the rest of my life regretting it. I did a fine job because my fiancé's is all I ever imagined and wished for. He's caring and attentive. He's confident and not threatened by the fact that I'm making waves in my career. Above all, he loves God, which is the most important for me. We got engaged nine months ago, and our wedding is in two days. I'm so excited. I can't wait to start a life with him and have his cute babies. Me plus him equals fine. My stepsister still hates me, but now she tries to hide it when everyone is around. She thinks she's in a race with me and tries to do everything better than me. Whenever I hit a milestone, she makes a sly comment or tries to turn the attention away from me. By now, everyone knows this, so they stay out of our way. She was so jealous that I was going to be married before her. Though she pretended to be happy for me, she offered to be involved in my wedding planning. I wanted to refuse, but my mom and fiance asked me to give her a chance. I overheard her telling my mom that she had ordered a wonderful cake as a wedding gift for me. She said, Since I was in love with France, where I was traveling for my honeymoon, she had made a French-style cake with French cookie. She had planned with the event planner to surprise me with a slice as part of her speech at the reception. My mom seemed so excited that she thought of getting me a gift. I immediately knew that this was not a gift but her ploy to turn my wedding into a disaster. I have severe almond allergies and ended up in the hospital the last time there was cross-contamination. Because of this, I don't eat desserts that my immediate family or I didn't order. I can't trust anyone else to remember it. Notice how she coined her sentences to seem so so innocent and harmless with the whole French style cake and French cookies. Who doesn't know that French cookies are macarons and contain almond flour? This is why she didn't mention the word macarons or my mom would caught on immediately. My mom was unsuspecting because she knew my stepsister was very aware of my allergies, so she didn't expect her to purposefully order something that would harm me. She even went a step further to make it look like a sweet gesture so that I get served something poisonous during her speech. The worst part is that she had also planned her escape by telling my mom, if anything happened to me, 
she'd say she told my mom. My mom approved of it, not realizing that macarons are made with almond flour. I will confront her at our rehearsal dinner today. I can't wait to see her face when I finish my plan. The rehearsal dinner was excellent. When it was time for the toast, I got everyone's attention and asked for a slice of cake for my stepsister. She seemed a little nervous, and rightly so. I told everyone that I always wanted to have a sibling, and when my stepdad and mom got together, one of the first questions I asked was if he had a child I could play with. I was so excited to hear that he had a daughter and she was older than me. I thought I had found someone I could look up to. I was surprised that she wasn't as excited to see me when we met. I thought her attitude would wear off because my mom told me she need more time to adjust. I waited for her, but she never came around. At this point, my fiancé was looking at me, trying to stop me or figure out what I was doing. I continued telling everyone that I wished things were different. I wished my stepsister didn't see me as competition. I wished she would love me, and even now I still do. I told everyone that my stepsister, who was supposed to look out for me, planned to harm me on my wedding day. She was the only culprit because everyone else she had planned with was unsuspecting. I told them I overheard her telling my mom she would get me a cake for my wedding as a gift. My mom was excited, of course, because it was a miracle coming from her. She didn't realize that by French cookies, she meant macarons, which I couldn't eat. My stepsister is very much aware that I'm allergic to almonds and other nuts. If there was something my stepsister couldn't do, it was lie. She wasn't good at it, so she couldn't deny that I was speaking the truth. Our dad was so disappointed that he expressed it openly. He told her that he had warned her severely to change her attitude towards me. He said he could not recognize the sweet little girl he had raised. He told her I was done waiting for her to come around, so she wasn't invited to my wedding or anything else related to me. As far as I was concerned, I didn't have a sister. There was an uproar. It was chaos because everyone was talking at the same time. My fiance came to calm me down. He knew that what I had just done was very hard for me because I'm not the type to cut people off. My family tried to change my mind, but I was resolute. What was done was done. I knew this broke my stepdad's heart but he would have to overcome it. For so many years, I had waited for her to see me as her sister, not her enemy, and now I was done. My stepsister walked out on everyone without an apology. Not that I expected one. Good riddance. N-T-A, your sister needs to see a therapist. She's probably dealing with damage from her childhood. It's good that you banned her from your wedding and anything that concerns you until she comes back to her senses. You still have to be extra careful in case she tries to hurt you again. N-T-A, your mom was careless. She was blinded by her need to have your stepsister love you. She should have known that French cookies were macarons, especially if your stepsister has never been thoughtful towards you before. Your mom should have suspected something because people don't change overnight. YTA, you could have been more patient and used the opportunity at the rehearsal dinner to let her know that you love her unconditionally. You had a chance to win her over but you chose something else. I believe that you can still make it right if you wish. For some background, my dad was not exactly the most giving or caring husband in the world. My dad never gave mom any surprises or presents or anything like that. When it came to her birthdays, he did the absolute minimum amount of work for them. When it came to her 50th birthday, mom raised her expectations, it being a milestone birthday. She kept asking dad over and over again, apparently. I didn't witness this myself as I was at school, if he was going to throw a party or take her somewhere. To which dad would always answer. You'll see, but of course, he did basically nothing. He did not throw any party. Mom spent the entire evening of her 50th in tears because nothing happened following her party less lunch at a restaurant. I'm not sure mom ever forgave dad for this one. Their marriage was extremely rocky in later years anyway. So when they loudly fought about just about anything and everything, I just used to put loud music on to drown it out. Dad died two and a half years ago, and since then, I find a lot of mom's anger towards my dad, as well as her abusive parents, has been raining down on me. Every year, she does the same thing she used to do to dad. Are you throwing me a surprise party this year? Or are you taking me someplace at SAC? Like that expectation is on me now. Every time this inevitably leads to her crying about her 50th birthday again. But here's the thing, she now seems to be bearing a grudge against me for it. You didn't do anything. Why didn't you throw me a party? Why did you let dad not throw me a party? You could have done something. You know, why didn't you on and on and on? You're just as bad as him, she proclaims. She also often asks, why didn't you see what was happening and badger him into organizing something to which my answer is? I was in 12th grade drowning in assignments, and it was coming up to end of semester exams at the time. School was really stressful, and I was borderline flunking two classes from being unable to keep up with the workload. I didn't have the time or headspace to listen in on my parents' every exchange, conversation, and fight. But of course, she doesn't accept this as an answer and says that's no excuse. I should have still seen what was going on. There's also the fact that mom's 50th birthday was nine years ago, 
and every year since dad died, this is the third year. I still get all the flack for how her 50th went down. I feel it's not my fault, and I'm just being punished for my dad's wrongdoing. NTA, your mom's anger is displaced. It was your father's responsibility, and unfortunately, he's no longer around for her to blame. She needs to seek therapy because having that much resentment over a high schooler not throwing her a birthday party almost a decade ago is very unhealthy. NTA, and only by the grace of God, I didn't go where your mother is right now with misplaced anger. In her age, too. So anyway, while she's going off on you, you have literally nothing to lose by saying, Ma, I was a kid. That's why my childhood wizardry because of all your fighting. I'm sorry you married in a hole, but I had no say at the time will feel like an out-of-body experience as these difficult words pass through, but let them. And if your mother reacts badly, take it up again in a few days, weeks, or months. She'll back off. She's dealing with a lot, so be loving, but it's not on you to heal her. You can't. NTA, your mom has reached an age where she's looking back at her life, and it sounds like she has a lot of regrets, likely about her marriage. Without your dad to blame, she's taking it out on you, which isn't fair, since you've already reminded her of your age and place in life at the time. I think you should shut down the discussion every time she brings it up and suggest each time that she gets into therapy. It's not normal or healthy to obsess over it for nine years. If she's not happy, she needs to learn how to make herself happy and not put the responsibility for her happiness on you. Therapy may be able to help her get there. I work in healthcare, and we are on an every other holiday schedule. I worked Thanksgiving, so I get Christmas off. We also get double time when working on a holiday. Even though I worked Thanksgiving, I still hosted and cooked a small Thanksgiving celebration for my husband's parents and us, plus my two kids, who stopped over for a bit. My husband and I have had a lot of problems in our three years together, but thanks to marriage counseling, things are looking up. One thing he's always done that really hurts my feelings is act like I'm not part of his family and rarely include me in his thoughts and plans regarding them. In fact, I didn't even know I was hosting Thanksgiving until three days prior, even though he had made these plans with them weeks before. I think he only told me before the day of because he realized there would be no food if he didn't. He also neglected to tell me what time they would arrive, so they came only an hour after I started cooking. Which brings me to the incident. My in-laws were leaving, and my husband walked them out while I put things away. I had windows open, so I overheard a conversation between them where his parents invited us to Christmas with them, where all the extended family would be together. My husband replies, sure, I would love to come no mention of me or asking me if I'd like to go or anything. I decided to wait for him to extend the invitation, so I never said anything, and neither did he. So, feelings hurt and angered, I went to work today and signed up to make that extra money on Christmas too. I came home and told my husband, and he got really upset and told me his family was expecting us on Christmas. I then told him I heard the conversation, and I was never mentioned. And since he never asked, I assumed he didn't want me there. He told me that, since we're married, we're considered the same person when invited. Now, his parents are upset with me too, since it would be awkward for him to show up without me. So he's thinking about not going. My friends think I finally did the right thing and stopped waiting for him to include me in his family. So, Ita? A quick edit. As I've seen it brought up often, my 16-year-old son still lives with us. He recently connected with family on his father's side and asked to spend Thanksgiving with them. I have no family of my own, so I was thrilled for this. He still stopped over with my daughter, who is 18 and recently moved out on her own and spent Thanksgiving with her boyfriend for a while. He also wants to spend Christmas Day with them, and my daughter will be on vacation with friends. So, I have not lost custody. There are other explanations than that. My husband is also professionally diagnosed with autism, but besides some counseling as a child, he's never had professional treatment for it. He starts therapy in one week. It's all new to me, as I just found out. I wondered before, though, due to signs being there. So, I have not learned yet how to best deal with this. Yes, Jash. Your husband sounds exhausting. The fact that he doesn't communicate plans with you especially when he expects you to cook or buy gifts or show up to something, is both rude and weird. The fact that you would decide to work on a big holiday without discussing it first is also weird. Has communication come up in your marriage counseling? If not, it's time for you to bring it up. The two of you will absolutely not last if you can't tell each other simple things like what you're doing for Christmas. NTA you work in healthcare. That's all he needs to say to explain your absence. As for what happened at Thanksgiving, you should have wished him while making dinner and reminded him you were working. Tell him he needs to consult with you before you can be committed to an activity. Until you're consulted, you're not going to go. And if you make another commitment because he didn't consult you, then too bad. You and he are not one person. He does not speak for you. Time to call your marriage counselor. You two need more practice communicating. NTA I don't understand. 
Your husband made these arrangements for Thanksgiving. It was then for him to do the shopping, preparation, cooking, cleaning, etc. You were working, and before and after, he was probably watching football and parades on TV. Why would you hang around for a Christmas of more of the same? Buying gifts for people who treat you like this? Falling in with plans he makes and then doing the heavy lifting. If you allow this to go unremarked, his practices won't change. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.